Okay, so let's actually work on our characters a little bit more. Specifically, I want to make them fade in and out. And I want them to change expressions. Now, it should be fairly obvious how to do these things at this point, but I figure I might as well do it anyways because, um, well, I don't want someone to look at the code in a later version of our project and be like, hey, where did this come from? And how do I do this? So let's take care of that. Now, for the alpha, it's actually basically the same thing as our target speed. I mean, our um, target X. We're just going to use our character images, uh, what is it? Opacity? Render opacity. Get and set render opacity. We're basically going to do the same thing as this, except with the render opacity. So, since we're going to be using the same um, uh, math anyways, let's just make it a part of our visual novel library. Because I don't want to have this much space being taken up twice in our function. Um, plus it makes it more reasonable in case we want something else we want to use. So, let's add a new function. And we'll call this something like, oh, what should we call this? It's not a lerp, but it, let's just call it a fake lerp. Because it's not actually a lerp, but, you know, whatever. Um, yeah. So what we're going to need is our current value. Uh, inputs over here. We need our current value. Float. We need the target value. We need the delta time and the speed. And we're going to return a, well, let's go with output. And let's just copy and paste this stuff over here copy and paste. Now, these aren't the thing uh, that we're going to use in our fake alert, but let's just keep it here anyways for now so we can see where these plug into because this is going to be our, um, this x right here is our current value, so this plugs into here and where is this? The bottom of that plus. And this um, less than sign right there. And this is connected to our target x, okay. So our target value goes into everywhere target x used to be. Like so. We can get rid of this and these. Move speed is goes into our move speed. And I believe this right here is our delta time. And we can just plug this into our output and probably want to, where is this nearly equal plugged into? Nearly equal plugs into our branch. Okay, um, actually we don't need this then. Goodbye. Let's clean this up a little bit. Actually, that's still really messy, but yeah, that's actually really messy, but whatever. It's fine. We're never going to look at this again. It's it's fine. So compile, save this, and go back to our participant. We can just use the, oh, also make this a um, pure function to get rid of the execution pin, and let's just do fake lerp. There it is. Dot the time, plugs into here. Target X is there, current value is this one, and our speed is our move speed. And we just plug this into our translation X, so we can get rid of all of this stuff now, or most of this stuff. Actually, where is this pick is... Okay, so this is still fine. Got it. <clears throat> Delete these. Delete this stuff. Like so. Okay, so this is going to be our um, set our target X. So let's make sure this still works actually. So we play, start, and she goes away. Great. 
Um, let's do a sequence node now. So first we're going to set our opacity and then we're going to set our target x. So let's do a sequence like that. And for our opacity we just need uh, two more variables. We need our target opacity and we need our uh, fade speed. Compile and I'm going to set my target opacity to be 1 in normal cases because you're probably going to want them to be visible. And for a fade speed let's go with also a value of 5000, not 500, 5000. And let's just do the same thing as here. Um, we're going to do a branch to see if it's not nearly equal to our uh, target opacity, so get our target opacity, get our character image, get render opacity nearly equal to our target opacity and branch plug that into our Zen 0 in our sequence node and if it's not nearly equal we will set our characters render opacity to be the fake lerp like that um, current value is our render opacity right there target value is our target opacity delta time is delta time and our speed is our fade speed compile save and let's um, see if this works. So let's go to our test dialog and when she goes away I'm also going to make a enter sorry when she goes away I'm going to add another enter event for Yuri to modify a actually let's make a new function in our um, well not new function but a new thing in our participant for modify bool value and the name is just going to be if it's visible or not. So let's do a switch on name. Switch on name. Add a pin for visible. And we're going to set our target opacity based on um, this new value. So do a select on target opacity the index is going to be our new value or um, and if this is true then the value is going to be 1, if it's false it's going to be well false and by default we can get rid of the default and then let's just return compile save back to our dialog when she goes away, let's do a modify bool. That bool is going to be visible. And the value is going to be false. Save and play. Start and go to the next line. And that's. She moves away so fast. Um, let's go back. Oh, uh, also, Yuri didn't actually fade away, but that's because of the issue with the way we set her up. Let's go back to our widgets for Yuri make sure that her modified bool value calls the parent function if you uh, set it up correctly you won't need to do this but I do like so, compile, save and um, let's just make her move speed back to 1 so we can see what's going on start and she goes away way too fast wow she went away really fast Yuri, fade speed, what if we make this one? Compile, save, play. There she goes. Okay, so it wasn't an issue of her disappearing instantly, she just went away really fast. Let's uh have a default value of say five. Ten.
I like 10. Alright, so back to our participant, I'm just going to set the fade speed to 10. And the other thing we wanted to do was um, set the expressions, which is fairly simple. We can just go back to our modify name value. And instead of doing this switch on name, by the way, I'm going to make a new local variable for well our name our um, positions. Let's just call this well positions. And this time it's actually going to be the uh, sorry not string. This is going to be a name, and it's actually going to be the map variable this time. Uh, last time it didn't work because you couldn't choose your widgets as keys or values, but or you. Um, but we should be able to do it now with just name and float. Well, save and in our positions, we just add the five. Sorry, we can't add a value while we have a default value in it as a key. So let's go off left. That's keft. That is not left. center, right, and off right. And the main reason I'm doing this is to save some space, honestly. I just don't want these, to, I don't want this to be taking up so much space. Um, also we need the actual values, so let's go negative 1,500, negative 700, 0, 700, and 1,500. So what we can do here, instead of switching on the name, we can delete this. Uh, actually, what did we set? We set the target x. Okay. We can just get our positions and find the name value that we pass into our modify name value, and then set target x over here like that takes up much less space this way. And we're going to do the same thing for um, if we're setting our expressions. So let's make a new case in our uh, switch on name. And this one is going to be expression. And I'm going to make a new local variable. Uh, we'll call this expressions. Actually, this won't work as a local variable. Uh, let me delete this, actually. Compile, save, and we'll make this a new variable in general. So uh, make a new just variable, and we'll call it expressions over here. And the reason this won't work uh, as a local variable is because we would all our characters would um, just use this function using the local variable that we set here, and we wouldn't be able to modify what every character's expression's um, image is going to be. So we need to make this a, a general variable. So back in like Yuri, for example, we can modify what the what expression means what. All right, so back in our participant, all we're going to do is switch the value of our name instead of, I mean, of our expression. Instead of being a float, it's going to be a, oh, actually, what is it going to be? We'll get our character image, and we're going to set brush from texture. That's the end result of this. And the texture type is texture2d. Alright, so back in our expressions, change the value from float to texture2d. Object reference, like so. So we'll find our, get our expressions and find the name value right there and pass that into our texture. And then return. Compile save, and now the um, back in our characters for each individual one. I'm not going to change Yuri's because she's not going to be sad. I'm going to change Anus. Back in our graph, in our expressions, I'm going to add a value for, let's say, sad. And I'm going to find the female student one, sad. Compile save, and back in our test dialog, when um, she says, wait, I didn't even get to introduce myself yet. I'm going to add a enter event, tell Aina to modify name, 
the name being expression and her new expression is sad. Let's save and see if this works. We'll play, start. Right now she's happy and now she is sad. Alright, so that works. Uh, how long has this video been? 15 minutes. Alright, just because this is going to be really quick, we might as well do this. I'm going to, instead of saying hello I'm Yuri at the very beginning, I'm just going to say hello. And what I'm doing right now is I'm making it so that before we know her name, she's just going to be a... Her, na her display name is going to show up as question marks. Which is, again, also really simple, but, you know, we might as well do it. And then after that, she's going to have a speech chart that says... I am Yuri. That's going to plug into our... I'm going to go away now, so delete this. Save and back in our characters, um, our participant. I mean, I'm gonna add a new variable. It's gonna be a bool that says that's just gonna be called um, introduced. So this is gonna be if we know their name or not. So change it from a map to a single variable and change the type to a boolean. Compile, save, and back in our get participant display name. I'm going to branch on if we're introduced or not. Branch. And if we are introduced, we're going to return, well, whatever their name is. So let's make another variable for uh, character name. This is going to be a text. And we just plug that into the return value over here. Otherwise, we're going to return three question marks, one, two, three, like so. Compile, save this, and on Aina, we want her to always know what her name is, so introduce is going to be true. However, for Yuri, it's going to st uh, start off as false. So back in our dialog right here, when she says, I am Yuri, we're going to add an enter event that just modifies Yuri's modify bool variable, it's going to be introduced, and we're going to set this to be true. So we hit play and start. Yuri still says it's, um, it still says her name. Why is that? Oh, that's because the, the way we set her up again. Um, go back to our participant display name, and I'm just going to add call to parent function and return this. Compile save, and I'm also going to do the same thing for Aina if I have to. Yep, display name. Actually, I think we can just delete this, and it would work fine. If we go back to Yuri, let's delete that. Um, get participant to display name. Delete, compile, save, and play. Start. Her name is question marks. And then she says, I am Yuri, and it doesn't return her name because I actually forgot to set her character name here to Yuri. Make sure I do the same thing for Aina. And play again. Question marks is her name, and now her name is Yuri. I'm going to go away now, and Aina's, her name is Aina because we set her to already be introduced. The reason I'm doing this, by the way, is because it's going to make it easier to do. Um, it's going to make it easier to do our codex later when we well do our codex, because what I want is for the buttons to show up on our codex to be question marks if we don't know who does who whatever that entry is. So for when checking characters, we're going to check to see if they're introduced or not to know whether to have a button that says question marks or well to show their name. Anyways, that's going to be it for this video. I'm not going to bother saying what the next video is going to be because it's probably going to change anyways. So see you then.